see you, Timber Smarmody here. It's been a while, I know, I know, but um, we're going to go over the three specific things that the Lord spoke to me about last year. And uh, the reason that I'm going to be going over this is because I truly believe in my spirit and in my heart that um, we are so close to the rapture, you guys, that um, I don't want any of you guys to miss the rapture. I'm praying and hoping that all of you who visit this channel and have listened to the, uh, the things that I have said on these videos, I hope they have impacted you and have caused you to think about things and use your mind because you have the mind of Christ. There's a lot of false prophets out there and there's more and more rising up each and every day. So I have decided to um, focus in and zero in on these three things that the Lord spoke to me when he was angry and how this came about was I was um, watching a church service online and uh, I won't tell you who but um, as I was listening the Lord got very angry at something one of the ministers um, said so this is this is how this uh, message came about from the Lord to me. So God spoke to me about three specific things and we're going to go over this. This is the first video. Uh, Jeremiah 23 11. Both prophet and priest are godless. Even in my temple I find their wickedness declares the Lord. Therefore their path will become slippery. They will be banished to darkness and they will fall. I will bring disaster upon them. In the year they are punished, declares the Lord. First thing he talked about was idol worship. The Lord said to me, I am angry with the body of Christ. They are all worshiping their pastors. So he added, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before thee. He says, tell my people I am angry with them for this. So, what happened? What happened to serving God? These men of God that start out on the path, and then suddenly they have an entourage. People are giving them Rolls Royces, not questioning purchases like airplanes, mansions to live in. They buy stocks and bonds. They take international trips on their vacation. Uh, Rome, Italy, France, and God knows where else, you know, that uh, we're not aware of, but uh, they don't tell us everything, do they? Now, vacation is fine, you know, but, um, you know, the church money that is collected can be used for the body of Christ. As it's supposed to be for that purpose. But why is church money being spent on personal lavish lifestyles? And people think it's okay. No one questions these things. Are congregations under some magic spell possessed by seducing spirits? Now, I remember a long time ago, oh, before I became saved, uh, there was a movie called Angel Heart. And in this movie, the pastor was into voodoo. So he was controlling his congregation to give all their wealth to his ministry, and this is not a uh, this is really a gross movie. So I wouldn't recommend if you go out to see this movie or rent it that uh, you do it with your kids because it's really graphic. But um, the point is the control of the ministry, the seducing spirits. Is the body of Christ responsible for paying a ministry's bill? bills, their personal bills, their international vacation bills, 
what are the bills that the body of Christ is supposed to be responsible for? Where is the line drawn? Amen? What happened to being dedicated to preaching the gospel instead of preaching about the tithe? Now, I did a video not too long ago about um, if you tithe, you're cursed because of scripture. And I recommend you look at that video if you haven't done so, because I don't want to be redundant here. But what happened to putting the sheep of God first? Remember the sheep, you pastors that are fleecing the flock? Ministries call it giving to God. Why do ministries today and mega churches? Joseph Prince, Kerplo Dollar, uh, Benny Hinn. Oh, who's that other one I'm trying to think of? Bishop Eddie Long, Kenneth Copeland, um, Jim Baker, still I visited his channel and he's still doing the same stuff. So, uh, I don't know if he learned anything. I hope so. But, um, why is it necessary for these men and women, uh, Paula White, to believe it is their right to live like kings and queens. Jeremiah 23.10, the land is full of adulterers because of the curse of the land. Because of the curse, the land lies parched and the pastures in the wilderness are withered. The prophets follow an evil course and use their powers unjustly. And uh, I would say this qualifies in this case. Now, um, I want to touch base on the scripture in Mark 11:15. Money changers in the temple. Now Jesus cleanses the temple, so they came to Jerusalem. Then Jesus went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. So now we're gonna pump up the volume here touch on a, on a very fragile area. Does this include selling a pastor's books, tapes, and other stuff at conferences like caravan wares? Did Jesus stand outside the temple with the apostles pushing parchment? They did not have CDs and DVDs and books back then. So. Jesus threw the temples over in anger. Is a church not God's house? Why is there an exception being made Today, if you tithe, you are cursed. I am not saying don't give or how much to give. It's unlimited giving. The amount is up to each person. I'm saying scripture tells us if we do not follow the other 600 plus Mosaic laws, which include tithing, but tithing is not spoken of in the Bible in reference to money. Rather, livestock, grain, oil, wine. If you tithe money, you will be cursed. You're worshiping your idol. You're supporting idol worship. You're uh, making a man king. This is what this means. And uh, tithing in, in the day of the Lord never was money. This is the word of God. We follow all other scriptures, why not this one? Many pastors would say, as the ones I mentioned, do as I say, not as I do. When one Georgia preacher was given over a million dollars as a tithe offering, did it go to the church fund? I thought that's what tithing and offering was for, to give to the church. Giving to God, right? That's what they say. Okay, why wasn't it? That's where it was supposed to go. It was for the church. No, this money went to the personal pocket, the personal bank account of this particular preacher, and I believe you all know who I'm talking about. 
He bought a corporation where he makes hair products, Afro-American hair products now, and he sells them. Now, does any of that profit money go back to the church? The money he stole from the tithes and offerings that were supposed to go to the church. If a church member did that, that same preacher would be screaming how the person stole money from God. How he cheated God. Hello? What about our brother from the other church in Georgia? The money people tithe to God. It went to the five young men he raped and sodomized as a five million dollar settlement. Tithing is unscriptural. It is not God's command. No one benefits from this except the money changers. If a pastor tells you, I can give you all the scriptures where it says that tithing is from God, you tell him to give you those scriptures to do a message with all those scriptures because there aren't any, there are none. In my video where I talk about tithing being a scripture, I gave you scripture after scripture. God will bless you when you stop tithing because then you will be in obedience to God. He never commanded the people to tithe money. Break the chains that bind you guys. Jeremiah 23, 20. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he fully accomplishes the purposes of his heart. In days to come you will understand it clearly. I did not send these prophets, yet they have run with their message. I did not speak to them, yet they have prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, they would have proclaimed my words to my people and would have turned from their evil ways and from their evil deeds. Now the reason we're going over all these uh, things, as I mentioned before, is because I believe that the rapture is very, very close. And this was one of the things that the Lord spoke to me about. And I do believe you will get left behind if you continue to do this. This is a form of idol worship. And um, God was very specific when he gave me these three things to tell the people. So this is number one and at uh, the end of this video. So I'm going to go work on number two. Amen. I'll talk to you later. Take care. God bless. And don't stop giving but you're not obligated to time. Amen? Talk to you later.